Hi, I'm JJ and welcome back. In this lesson, we're diving into one of software's core concepts, connecting your app to your data source. By the end of this lesson, you'll understand the different types of blocks in software, how to add new blocks to your application, how to connect blocks to your data source, how to map data fields from your data source to display them in your application, how to sync your user's database with software for testing user-specific experiences. Okay, let's get started by discussing the different types of blocks that are available in software. Software offers three main types of blocks. Dynamic blocks. These pull live data from your connected data source and update in real time. Examples for these include lists for displaying collections, tables for structured data, and calendars for events. Or static blocks. These display content that doesn't change unless you update it manually. Examples include hero banners for welcome messages, FAQ sections for common questions, and call to action buttons. For container blocks, these help you organize and group other blocks to improve your layout and design. Some examples include tabs for related content and columns for side-by-side -side layouts. Think of blocks as the building materials for your application, each serving as a unique purpose. Now, let's add our first block. Navigate to the Pages area in the left-hand panel and open the page where you want to add your block. Click the Add Block button in the top right corner or by clicking the plus button in the center of the page. From the Block Library, choose a List Block. Lists are perfect for displaying collections of data like tasks, products, or clients. Now that we've added a block, let's connect it to your data source. Click on the New List Block and in the right-hand panel, navigate to the Source tab. Select your desired data source. Software works with a wide variety of platforms, so you can easily connect to the tools you're already using. Here are some examples. For Airtable, it's a user-friendly database that's quick to set up and great for smaller data sets, but keep in mind, it can get expensive and slower with larger data sets. With Google Sheets, it's perfect for small, lightweight projects or when you're just getting started with organizing data. Notion is ideal for managing team data and documents all in one place with the added bonus of being intuitive to use. For HubSpot, it's a great option for sharing CRM-like data with clients. You can build secure, custom portals that sync directly with your CRM, providing a seamless two-way connection. SQL databases are the best choice for scaling. These handle large data sets efficiently while keeping your costs down, or the REST API. If your preferred tool isn't natively supported, you can connect virtually any data source through software's REST API for advanced customizations. With software's support for 14 different data sources at the time of this recording, it's easy to bring your data to life no matter where it's stored. Follow the prompts to authenticate your account. This might include logging in, granting permissions, or entering an API key. What's authenticated? Decide which bases, data sets, or documents, depending on your data source's terminology, you want to use in your app. Ensure the data is structured and organized to match how it will be used in your software application. Now that your block is connected to your data source, it's time to map the data. Software attempts to map fields automatically, but you'll want to review and fine tune the setup to ensure everything is correct. Go to the content tab in the right hand panel. For each field in your list block, for example, title or description, you need to match it to the appropriate field in your data source. This includes selecting the right format for each field. For example, text is ideal for task names. Tags is good for categories or labels. URLs is perfect for links that users can click on. Or files, which are great for pictures or product photos. As you make changes, software will instantly update the block, allowing you to see how your data looks in real time. And did you know that you're not just limited to one data source in software? Since data sources are mapped at the block level, you can connect multiple data sources within the same app. Simply follow the same steps above for a different block and select a new data source, bringing all of your data together seamlessly in one place. To enable features like previewing as a specific user or setting up user-specific experiences, you need to sync your user database with software. Here's how you can do that. Go to the Users area in the left-hand panel and click on the Users tab. Click the Sync with Data Source button. Select the data source that contains your users, then choose the appropriate base and table. Map the required fields. For example, your email field is mapped to the software's email field. 
name field is mapped to software's name field, and avatar field is mapped to software's avatar field. Once all these fields are mapped, click save and sync. And that's it. Your users will now appear in software, allowing you to preview the app as different users and test user-specific features. Now that you've set up your block and synced your users, it's time to test everything. Software offers two environments for testing and sharing your app, preview and live. Here's the difference. Preview, this is your testing environment. It allows you to see how your app looks and functions without making it visible to your users. For your live environment, this updates the live version of your app, making any changes visible to your users. For now, let's focus on the preview mode to ensure everything is working as expected. Click the preview button in the top right corner of the studio. Preview your app as different users by selecting the profile from the user dropdown in preview mode if needed for logged in experiences. Navigate to the page with your list block and confirm that your data is displayed correctly. Testing in preview mode lets you confidently refine your app before sharing it with your users. Great work, you've just connected you to your first data source, mapped your data, synced your user database, and brought your app to life with a dynamic block. This foundational step opens the door to creating truly interactive and user-specific applications. In the next lesson, we'll take it a step further by diving into an in-depth explanation of all block types, including searching and sorting and filtering functionalities, and the powerful item detail block, perfect for displaying detailed record-specific information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.